In this video, we're going to take a look at specific solutions to the Schrodinger equation, which are the hydrogen atom orbitals. So watching one, this video is one step towards helping you meet the learning objectives of being able to define orbitals using the quantum numbers and being able to identify the orbitals based on their shape. So we're going to start off this video by discussing the hydrogen atom energy and orbitals. The Schrodinger equation is the main equation in quantum mechanics that's used to basically describe the properties of quantum mechanical particles. And we can solve it exactly for a one electron system like the hydrogen atom. So when we do that, we find that the energies are given by negative 2.18 times 10 to the negative 18 joules times one over the quantum number squared, which is N. And that quantum number is basically the result of only certain solutions being allowed. So it's sort of an index of the particular solution that we're looking. And the lowest energy one is gonna have the lowest value of the quantum number, which is when N equals one. In addition to the energy, we also get the wave function. And the wave function is basically the mathematical function that describes the quantum system. And those orbitals are actually described by three different quantum numbers. The first one is the principal quantum number, which is the one that determines the size and the energy. The second one is what we call the angular momentum quantum number, which is L. And the third one describes the orientation and that quantum number is m sub l. And so we'll look at those in more detail in the upcoming slides. So first we're gonna take a look at the principal quantum number n. n is a number, it's an integer that's greater than or equal to one, and it determines the size and the energy of the orbital that we're talking about. So of the particular solution to the Schrodinger equation. And a larger n is gonna to correspond to a higher energy. Since the energy is negative, the higher energy means it's getting to be a less negative value. And we define the energy equal to zero when there's no interaction between an electron and the nucleus. And you'll also notice that the energy between these levels gets smaller as the energy increases. And that again has to do with the fact that we're multiplying by one over the quantum number squared. So the size of the orbital um, is also directly correlated with the principal quantum number. And as that n gets bigger, the size of the orbital gets bigger. And we can see that very quickly looking at these radial probability distribution functions where for the n equals one case, the maximum is less than 25 picometers. For the n equals two case, it's between 25 and 50 picometers. And then for the n equals three case, the maximum is above 50 picometers. So you can see that it's getting bigger as that principal quantum value is increasing. But there's actually two other quantum numbers that we need to consider. The first of those is the angular momentum quantum number. And this is the quantum number that's responsible for the shape of the orbital. And this quantum number can have integer values between zero and n minus one. So that means if your principal quantum number is one, you could only have one possible value of L, which would be zero. If your principal quantum number is two, you can have two possible values of L. And it's most common in chemistry that the L values get designated by letters. And these letters actually come from an older version of spectroscopy or kind of looking at, at the interaction of light and matter. But for our purposes, you just need to know that the lowest value of L is zero, and that corresponds to an S orbital or a spherical shaped orbital. The L equals one value corresponds to a P orbital, which is peanut shaped, that's how I remember it anyway. And it has two lobes. The L equals two value corresponds to a D orbital, which has four lobes, and the L equals three value corresponds to an F orbital. And we'll look in more detail at those in a minute. But first I want to also address the magnetic quantum number, which is what determines the orientation of the orbital. So it determines sort of which direction that orbital is pointing. So for P orbitals where L was equal to one, we have three possible values for M sub L. And they, that's negative one, zero, or one. 
And generally, the, the possible values are integers that go from negative L to positive L. And this also lets us determine the number of orbitals of any given shape, because the number of L, M sub L values will correlate with the number of orbitals. All right, so let's dig into our orbital shapes in a little more detail. First of all, let's look at the s orbitals. So s orbitals, again, are spherically symmetric. And there's going to be one s orbital for every principal quantum number. Starting with the principal quantum number n equals 1, we're going to have a 1s orbital. And that's the lowest energy orbital in a hydrogen atom. And in fact, in any atom, it's going to be the lowest energy orbital. So in the 1s orbital, there's no nodes. There's no angular nodes, which would be the ones associated with the shape. And there's no radial nodes, which are the ones associated with the increase in principal quantum number. But if we look at the other values of n, so here we have n equals 1, n equals 2, and n equals 3, you can see that they're increasing in the number of radial nodes, which means that the total number of nodes is going to be n minus 1. It's the p orbitals are the ones with l equal to 1. And every state with n greater than 1 so starting with n equals 2 is going to have three p orbitals. And those p orbitals are, are often discussed as being oriented along an x, y, and z axis. But those axes are sort of arbitrary. So the important thing to know is that there's three of them, and they're orthogonal or perpendicular to each other. The p orbitals have one angular node. So that's the node, again, associated with the shape. If I cut the orbital in half, that's the angular node. And there's still a total of n minus 1 nodes. So in the n equals 2 orbital, there's only one node. But in the n equals 3 p orbitals, there would be a radial node plus the angular node. In the d orbitals, which occur for every state with n greater than 2, so starting at n equals 3, we have a set of d orbitals. And those are going to, there's five d orbitals corresponding to the five possible m sub l values. These orbitals are mostly four lobed, which can be split by what we call nodal planes in two directions. So there's two planes basically that slice through these orbitals. Now there's going to be two angular nodes and two nodes at the nucleus. There is one of the d orbitals which is shaped a little bit differently, and that's the m sub l equals zero orbital. And in this case, rather than having planes, we have cones that describe the nodes. And so it looks sort of more like a p orbital, but with a donut around it. So the last set of orbitals we're going to take a quick look at are the f orbitals. And these are the most complicated ones that we typically consider in chemistry. They have three angular nodes, so three planes cutting through the nucleus. And typically these have six lobes or eight lobes, although there is also this one that is um, similar to the d orbitals. This one has two donuts around it. So to summarize our orbitals for the hydrogen atom, orbitals again are the regions of high probability of finding an electron. This is where the electron are mo is most likely to be. And the shape and energy are described by three quantum numbers, the n, L and M sub L values. The L values are also more commonly denoted with letters. And these may seem a little bit arbitrary, but you just have to know them. And then there's the, M, the associated M sub L values, which tell us about the orientation. In hydrogen, the energy is totally described by the principal quantum number, which is N. And the total number of sublevels for any given n is going to be n squared. We can also talk about the total number of orientations for any given value of L, which would be 2 times L plus 1. That's related to the m sub L values. And finally, we can talk about the nodes in the wave function, which the nodes are always going to be equal to the principal quantum number minus 1. And some of those nodes are designated as angular nodes, which are associated with the shape of the orbital, and the angular nodes is always equal to the value of L. And so if we want to look at this pictorially, it would be something like this, where we start off with the lowest energy being the n equals 1, L equals 0, m sub L equals 0 orbital. 
And then as we go up in energy, we have n equals two. There's four total states associated with n equals two. One of those is gonna be an S state, which is spherically symmetric. The other three will be in P orbitals, which are the, the peanut shaped ones. And then in the n equals three state, we have a total of nine levels. One is again an S state, three are P orbitals, and five are gonna be D orbitals. So this video presented the solutions to the Schrodinger equation for the hydrogen atom. And the good news is that all the effort you put into understanding the hydrogen atom will also carry over to looking at more electrons in atoms. There may be a bit of memorization involved here as you do need to know the quantum numbers associated with each of these different levels and also the shape of the orbital associated with each of the different L values. So take some time to learn these and you'll get some opportunities to practice during class time and in the homework.